Good morning and welcome to the Elevate Renatus team call. This is your host, Keely Austin. Today is Takeoff Tuesday. It is October 27th. I'm excited to be here with you this morning. Our quote of the day is, knowing is not enough, we must apply. Willing is not enough, we must do. Bruce Lee. 2021 Nationals. We have our dates for our national conference. Make sure you mark your calendar for March 18th through the 20th of 2021. We're having our national conference online. The theme is shifting higher into focused transformation. Leaders Retreat is happening next year, August 13th through the 17th, 2021. We're going to Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. So excited to see you all there. And oh yes, oes.com, if you haven't already, visit this website. There's a short video on there. It's about six minutes long. Michael Huggins and his team have put this together for us so that we have a clear understanding of what the OES is and what comes along with it. The OES stands for op Optional Event Subscription. We have added some things to our daily and weekly support system. Every Thursday, right before our pillars events and the other events that we have at seven o'clock on Thursday, we have a weekly private capital masterclass with Dane Clark. It starts at 6 p.m. Mountain Time every Thursday. We're gonna be going over the private and hard money classes plus several other classes in our education that all talk about raising capital for deals. Dan Clark has been very successful with this. And so that's why he's the one facilitating this masterclass each and every Thursday. So make sure you're tuning into that. Also every day after our morning marketing call, we're doing the dream call, which is the daily real estate action mastermind. It's about 45 minutes and we bring questions and thoughts about what classes we're watching, any deals we're looking at, and we're masterminding on how to approach these deals. It's been a lot of fun. And so that's every day, Monday through Friday, directly after our, our marketing call here that we're on right now. So from nine to about 9.45. And we've added on Friday mornings with Lily Portas. So make sure you're joining us on Friday mornings for the Monday or for the marketing call. And Lily has been doing a great job. She's been very successful with Renatus and she's been sharing us with us what's been working for her. And the last thing is the Monday through Friday, daily get to know you call. It's at noon mountain time with Scott Rowe and Michael Huggins. We're adding these onto YouTube. So you can also find those on YouTube. Just type in Elevate Renatus Zoom Up and you will find the recordings there. But it's always fun to jump on live at noon. These are designed for your guests. It's only 15 minutes and we have a special speaker on each and every day, someone new who's gonna share their story of their success with Renatus. So great exposure for your guests. And again, it's just short and sweet, only about 15, 20 minutes. Last week's house tour, we toured Ines's house tour. This property was paid for by her previous deal and she's gonna be living in it for free plus cash flow. So it's really different and an exciting deal. I love the house tours every Wednesday because there's always different types of transactions that we can show our guests, just the plethora of access that we have to all different types of transactions and exit strategies. For our events this week, if you'd like to take a screenshot, feel free to do so. This is a, a layout of what our week typically, typically looks like. Every Tuesday at 1230 Mountain Time, Michael Huggins is hosting the Profits Intro. It's been a lot of fun. There's people from all around the world jumping on these webinars. So tune in if you haven't yet, they're a lot of fun. Every Wednesday, as I mentioned, we have a house tour in English. Wednesday at 7 p.m. Great exposure for your guests. And then on Thursday, we've got lots going on. So much support for you with either your business. Well, of course, with your business, but with either the marketing side or with the real estate side. So if you're really focused on studying your fix and flip classes, feel free to, to jump on the fix and flip study group. We've got the wholesaling study group, multifamily and short-term rental. So multiple study groups built around real estate investing. And then of course the support for, for those who are marketing, get your guests in front of the pillars of wealth event, the follow-up and funding webinar. We have an onboarding session for guests and for new members. We have an essentials mastermind in English and Spanish and a business development study group. So lots and lots to plug in to on Thursday night. 
we do record these morning calls and you can find the recordings on our YouTube channel, Elevate Renatus, as well as on our Facebook page, Renatus Team Elevate. There's a lot of important announcements there as well. So make sure you plug into both the Facebook page as well as our YouTube channel. Today we get to learn from Bill Predavon. It's Takeoff Tuesday with Bill. I love learning from Bill. He is so very passionate about this business and about anything that he does. I have been fortunate enough to get to know Bill because we've been working together in the Scottsdale market for about four years now. And I definitely miss seeing him in person. He's just, like I said, he's got really great energy and so passionate about what he does with Renatus. Bill has built an incredible business utilizing this education and has built a very, very strong marketing business as well as a strong real estate business. So he is a shining example of what it means to be a product of the product with Renatus. Before Renatus, Bill was a pro skier in Bill, Colorado for 10 years and he realized that he was not really qualified to do much else. He knew that he needed to look into some other income opportunities and he decided to buy a couple of stores. So he owned a franchise with a couple of partners Due to lack of knowledge, he ended up losing the stores and losing everything at the time. This was right before the, the crash. So in 2007, Bill decided to get into real estate investing. He heard that that could be something lucrative. And without education, he dove right in. And during the 2008 crash, he ended up being upside down in over or $400,000. After that little hiccup there was when he found Renatus. And Renatus, the education, the opportunity was able to pull him out of that hole. So in his first year alone, he made eight times more than he did the previous year, working as both a loan officer and a realtor. And ever since, Bill has completed over 150 transactions. He's been, like I said, he's become a very successful real estate investor and learned everything from our education. And he has grossed multiple seven figures in real estate investing, and he's also a marketing leader on the pit team with our CEO, Bob Snyder. He's training to be on the PAC, the President's Advisory Council. So we are very, very fortunate to get to learn from Bill. Make sure you take notes. Good morning, Bill, how are you? Keely Keely, how are you doing, girl? Thank you for that awesome intro. I am doing well. I'm excited to be here. I love seeing all these people on here. I'm gonna shoot a text to my team and tell them to get on. I was just doing a Facebook post for the morning. Cool, 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 let's see. We are on now. Jump on the Zoom. Sweet. I got some cool stuff for you guys today, as we always do. Some days are better than others, right? It's so cool. Michael had some great stuff yesterday. You guys, if you, if you missed that one, uh, jump on the recording. Um, Super good stuff from the regional, um, as you guys all know. Keely, thanks for everything you do. Thanks for putting this together. Thanks for all the announcements. And um, congratulations on your success, as well as always, leading by example, which we love to see. Uh, great um, opportunity on the regional the other day to talk and just uh, share some stuff you got going on and what you're doing. So it's just, just cool. It's just cool to see. Right on. Okay. Uh, let's kick it off. 760-5333. Oh, I can't type. Uh, 3141. 760-533-3141. That is my cell phone number. Feel free to shout out uh, if you want. Just remember, if you call me or text me, and I'm sure there's some people on this call who have, and I haven't even gotten back to you. If that's the case, hit me up again. Um, or if I drop a ball or whatever, sometimes that happens. I don't mean to, but I, I will get back to you, especially if you hit me up, you know, two or three times in a row um, with a text and a call, then I, I'll know it's important right away or whatever. And I can get back with you sooner than later. I'm usually tied up when someone calls. Um, cool, cool, cool. Uh, wow. So I'm going to go over a few things. Uh, remember, if you guys have uh, any thoughts or stuff you're working on or questions or concerns with a client or, you know, something in your business center, whatever pertains to you and your business and what you're doing and what's important to you or what you're, what you're interested in learning about or getting my advice on or my experience on, you can just interrupt and shout it out. You can type it in the chat or you can talk out loud 
and we'll address it. Um, there is a chat here, Keely Beals. I am still not getting the emails as a member of Michael's OES. I got one email back on October 5th and blah, 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 October 20th, uh, request to join OES has been approved. So um, if they're not receiving emails still, um, just make sure that you're checking your spam, checking all your folders for an email from Michael Huggins. And if still you're not finding it, then the best person to reach out to is Skylar Jess or Michael Huggins himself. Those are the two that are pretty much running the yeah, email Yeah, reach out system. to Skylar on the, uh, one of the Facebook pages, uh, you know, the, and, and message him or whatever you need to do. Yeah, good idea. He's, that was, look at, Keely knows the answers. So I'm gonna tell you guys something. Um, let's keep going. All right, so I'm gonna go over a couple of things on what I think, um, I wanna talk to you guys about, oh, man, I got so many thoughts. So. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about combos and how I, how I, like how I, Michael said the other day that we do focus on combos. Um, you know, Dr. Gary and Scottsdale, that's one of the things we focus on too. And I'm going to share with you a little bit about, about what my thought process is on that. But, um, you know, I want to share with you a couple other things. Some of the things I thought about last week after I trained and see if I can put it all together in words today. Um, and then we can kind of bounce around on it. But, you know, one of the, I had a one-on-one -on -one yesterday with a gentleman I've been working on for working with, uh, for, for a little while. I, I, in fact, I met him a year ago. Um, I, I, I guess part of this is going to, going to remind you, um, that, uh, you are building a relationship, believe it or not, there are some cold leads that will just be cold. Like there's hundreds of people I don't talk to anymore, right? And there are many people that I reach out to um, periodically that I haven't talked to in a long time that were cold leads just because I have nothing else going on. But um, that's few and far between. And I can't say that there's too many that it, it, you know, there are times when it might work out or not. But this is someone that was a three foot warm market. And, um, and so we've kept in touch and we've gotten together and and, um, you know, for the first six months after I met him, we, we really didn't get together for a couple of different reasons, but over the last six months, we've gotten together multiple times and, um, originally just to hang out and get to know each other. Fast forward point is, um, we have been working on Renatus. I did send him a couple of the videos and, and I talked to him yesterday and, and, uh, I almost was with him for over an hour and, we probably spent five minutes on Renatus. This was a follow-up and this was a, I, my intention was to see where he was at. He, it had been a few weeks since we had been together again. And since I had given him any videos and that he had plugged in anything. So I knew it would have to do some refresher stuff. And, um, but more importantly, I was listening. Like we were talking and having a good time and catching up and talking friendship stuff and what we've been up to. He's building a pool for his wife and work and he's taking the week off and he's a golfer and he's a lifter. Um, and, and we talked about some of the stuff before, but, you know, part of this business is truly having, spending the time with people developing relationships. And I know that sounds weird, but, you know, when they enroll in the education, it literally is the beginning. It's not the end. And I know you guys all know that, but, um, so, um, but there were pertinent pointed questions, right? You know, I'm sure you've watched the video. There was a point I was probably 45 minutes into the conversation when I asked him that just when it led up to it, I didn't want to interrupt him when he's talking about his pool or have a conversation right after he finishes up with the pool and be like, Oh, that's awesome about you buying your wife a pool. So, you know, are you ready to get started? it doesn't make sense. Right. I mean, literally I was to the point where I had even conceded to the point where I might not even talk to him about Renatus till the very end and ask to resend him the video, but I had an opportunity in between and said, listen, so based on that, you know, you know, what you'd seen, do you have any questions, um, you know, or thoughts or, or, or where we're going with this? And he's like, you know, to be honest, I, I, I caught up on a little bit here, a little bit there, you know, I caught an hour here, 30 minutes there on some of the presentations I've, I've seen him, you know, I'm like, would you like me to send me, send it to you again? And maybe we can regroup. 
And he's like, yeah, that would be great. I'd really, you know, I have a week off this week. I'd really like to take a look at it. Um, and we talked about, he's a relator and we talked about community. We talked about the team. I talked, I told multiple stories. I didn't talk anything about Renatus and the packages and the pricing and the opportunity and all that stuff. I talked about my team and my, and, and my stories of the people on my team doing deals and coming together and, um, and working together and collaborating. And he actually said, so how does it work? Do we, you know, when I join your team, cause he knows people on my team, like that's how I met him was through some people on my team. And, um, and he knows what they're doing. And so he was like, you know, do people just get together and then, and then you just give each other money and do deals. And so he is interested. He's interested in the, in the, in the ideas of being around other people having success in real estate and was curious how that works and naturally uh, understands that education is important, but it's not as focused, right? All right, I've got a question. How do you re-engage with a potential student who is completely ready to purchase the education and then ghosting? Or do you bother? I do bother. I do bother you guys. Um, you know, Michael mentioned this yesterday and we talked about it over the weekend a lot and, 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 uh, and Nate Lambert hit it, hit it multiple times. Uh, it wasn't just Nate, but it's gotta be intrigue. When I re-engage, it's got to be an engaging question. Um, I don't, I don't say how are you, right? Um, I think that's impersonal, um, and and it's not wrong. You can do it, but follow it up, right? And you know, I engaged with somebody the other day, and I got to remember who it was. Um, come on, think. I engaged. Uh, man, I can't remember who it was. One of my intriguing questions was, uh, I wish I could remember, I'd go and look at the text, but the, the overall concept, and it was short and sweet, was, you know, hey, you know, how's it going? It's been a little while. Um, I was thinking about you, right? I was thinking about you, made it about him. And I said, you know, I, you told me you were pretty interested in real estate and, and something to that effect. Um, you know, are you, and I always ask a question with multiple questions, because I, if I ask one particular, are you still interested in real estate? That could be like, ah, eh, you know, I'm kind of afraid of it in this market. There could be a one short answer, but my question was more like, you know, you told me that you, you know, you and I talked about real estate. I know you were interested. Um, you know, is that still the case? Are you still interested in real estate? Do you still want to engage in some opportunities to look at how to learn to do real estate and start investing and, and building your portfolio and getting some, some properties under your belt. So there were multiple concepts in that question, right? Where I was asking him, but I created intrigue with the question, right? It was, it was, you know, Hey, have you looked at the market lately and, and considered, you know, I know, you know, six months ago, you were super excited about getting started with us and, you know, life happens, but have you, have you seen what's going on in the market? Right. And and it sparks an interest. And, you know, do you want to look, re-engage and, and reconsider in looking at what, what the opportunity is to get into real estate, right? I'm not like, hey, do you want to buy the education or do you want to get started in the education or do you want to look at the opportunity with Renatus again? It's more about what they were interested in the first place in. So if it was making money, working from home, paying off taxes, paying less in taxes or paying off debt, or doing real estate deals or buying a rental property, whatever that one or two things that they were interested in back then, I re-engage with that kind of a question. Does that still interest you? Have you still thought about that? Do you still want to do that? Because the answer is yes, right? But I, want, I don't want to restrict the answer. So um, I hope that helps. I absolutely would re-engage and I would do it through a text. Um, I got to tell you, and, and, and this is a good point is like, Today, when I was texting someone this morning um, at 48 degrees with a hat and gloves on, walking my dogs at 5.30 in the freaking morning, uh, about right, I'm like, am I in Arizona or am I in Utah? I don't know. And uh, it was absolutely freezing. <laughs> I was like, I just don't like the cold weather. And uh, I'm pretty sure I've skied my whole life. And, um, and I was texting this. I don't remember what the hell I was going to say because it was so damn cold. My brain froze. So, Okay. <laughs> So, all right, it was 12 degrees in Minnesota. Yeah, Cecilia, congratulations on your incredible success, by the way. I think I'm putting two and two together and I'm talking about the right person, but uh, hell to the no. 
about the 12 degrees. <laughs> it's snowing in Michigan where I'm from. My friends are like pulling out their snow plows and crap. My dad got a new snow plow. Forget about it. Forget about it, right? I'm fairly certain there's warmer climates. All right. I'm just kidding. You get used to it, right? Yeah, I'm going to move somewhere warm soon. Good for you. Uh, keep up the good work. And uh, yeah, that's awesome. So great, great, great question. So uh, I wanted to tell you about, okay, so it's not about what I want, but I thought it would be important to know, you know, my intention was to close this combo yesterday, honestly. But when I realized he really hadn't engaged in the education, which I was, I was concerned about. I figured that it'd been a little while that um, I wasn't going to ask for the sale. Um, I was building a relationship and I sat and listened to somebody for over an hour and he's a friend. Like he's become a friend. He's, I really like the guy. He's got a lot of energy. He's got a positive attitude. It's cool. Someone I would want to be around. In fact, that's what I texted him this morning on my follow-up was like your attitude and, and, you know, your um, enthusiasm and outlook on life is exactly, and I said this, you guys, when I texted, I talked about we, right? I didn't say, I said I every once in a while, but most of the time it's we. This is exactly what our group is all about. This is what my, our team, this is what we look for when we work with people, right? And so when I could be saying me and my one person on my team, I could be involving the entire Renatus Nation. So saying we, if you're only you, is not a problem. You still have us. We're still a part of your team. So you can you can share that success. You can uh, leverage that credibility. You can leverage that team, even though it's just you when you're texting. It's 70 degrees in Puerto Rico. Yeah. And, you know, I've been looking, Wanda, and I've checked my text and my email a couple of times. I don't see the invite. There was a, you know, I thought you said that you invited uh, me to come down and stay in Puerto Rico in a mansion somewhere, but I, I can't find that text. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so... Yeah, lucky, lucky Wanda, lucky Wanda, right on. All right, so here I want to talk. So you guys remember, if there's something that comes to mind when I'm, what I'm talking about, um, then, then, then just shout it out. I got a couple concepts. Okay, the combo. Michael uh, talked about this yesterday, and I was walking the dogs this morning thinking about this. Um, naturally, you want to start everybody wherever they can start. Um, in my true belief, um, and I don't know this for a fact, I'm speculating here, but there's a reason Bob um, Bob a lot, even has the AIT advanced, right? There could be multiple reasons, but one of them is, um, and even the essentials and, and, and the profits is, is a lower price point, if you want to call it that. But as we all know, that, that profits, in my opinion, is geared towards international. Like it's going to help people here. But there's a, you know, that's the, that's the stepping stone to an international business. Um, there's a specific point to it. Um, the, the essentials um, is a great starting place, if you want to call it that. It's an easier price point, if you want to call it that. But it is, um, it is there so, so no one's left behind, right? To possibly um, get somebody to witness and experience the quality of the instructor, when I say that, I mean like the, um, they get to experience some, what the, what the instructors really know and what these guys have really done and girls and what they're capable of and how well they deliver the message. Right. And then also naturally the education is there. They're going to see some of the depth of the education. Um, they're going to experience what it's like in the intensives are for this. Right. And they can taste uh, some of the classes and the, and the, and the excitement in some of the, and the, the instructors, right? But um, so the idea would be that, okay, maybe they'd see the value because they were, they were questioning the value. But um, there's very few people I know that, in fact, I was thinking about it for myself. I've never sold an advanced combo where they bought it and then done a deal and then purchased the, the upgrade with the advanced combo proceeds they made from a deal. Okay. I don't know anybody on my team that has ever bought education with the deal that they've done. It's been the opposite. So when I focus on the, on the combo, my assumption right of the way is that the people that I'm working with don't want to wait to make money. They don't want to wait to do a deal. They're not interested in, in doing a deal slowly. 
They're not interested in do a, doing a mediocre deal. I'm fairly certain they're not interested in wasting their time and money and, and not doing a deal at all. And I'm fairly certain they don't want to lose money. I'm also fairly certain they're not just interested in, in only trying to do one type of deal, that they understand that there are multiple ways to, uh, I'm not going to say that, there are multiple ways to do a deal. And, um, and so therefore, my knowledge is that you buy the combo. The combo offers all elements of what is going to enable them to be the most successful, the fastest. In fact, when I look at the people on my team that have been able to do the things that they want to do, my new prospects wants to do, the only people that have done it own the freaking combo, right? So why would I offer them anything else? I don't even talk about anything else, right? It's the only mindset I have. When I was speaking with him yesterday, you know, when I learned short sales, um, in the early 2008 and nine, and I was focused 100% on short sales. Um, one of the things that Tony Ga Tony Lister and Gavin McKayla taught in the short sales class was this, when you, when you influence the BPO, the broker's price opinion, if you're not familiar with short sales, don't worry about it. But when you're selling property, if you have a good agent, your agent is going to be all over the appraiser. The appraisal is important. Most of the time, the appraisal values come in. But if you're like me and you're flipping houses and you're setting markets, right? I'm putting another house on the market. I just, the house I just sold, sold for, sold for 292.5. The appraisal came in at 295. The exact model match sold three months ago at 276. It was the highest one. Do you think I was a little concerned about appraisal? Absolutely. Is the market going up? Yep. But it's imperative that I talk to the appraiser. Now I can't as the seller in this case, but my agent can, can let them know, hey, this is why this property is gonna go up. These are the repairs that were done to the property, right? This is why it's worth more than any other comp on the market. So when I was in short sales, um, the number one thing that made the difference in any short sale I did was meeting the broker's price opinion. I took the key out of the lockbox, the property was off market and I would meet the appraiser, the, the appraiser or the agent at the house. And I would talk about the hardship of the property. I didn't talk about what, how bad it looked. They can see that for themselves. They can do their own cost repairs analysis, right? But I would mention things like, you should see the houses for sale down the street. Look, there's 48 houses for sale on this one street. You think this thing's any different? It's not going to sell. But the number one thing I did was I mentioned the price at least five times. If I don't get this house for 120 grand, there's no way it's ever going to go to sale. It's going to go to auction and the bank's going to get it back. No one's going to win. Man, this house, I'll be lucky if it's worth 120. I'm surprised my buyers even offered 120, right? 120 is a lot of money. So I'm saying this all the time. When I talk to my prospects, I say, what? 23,000 bucks. It's not a lot of money. $23,000 is a ton of money. You know, it takes a lot of money. You know, I don't know if you thought about where you're going to get $23,000. That is a, a number that I talk about all the time, all right? And then when it comes to closing somebody, when it comes to making the decision, there are times when people are gonna flat out tell me, what are the other options? Do they break up the packages at all? Can I buy anything lower? Yeah, absolutely. I know that they've seen the presentation. I know that they know this, they just don't remember it, right? Every time I go to sell them the opportunity to be a part of Renatus, I'm going to sell them on what I think is going to be most valuable to them, which is the combo. It's what I own. It's what everybody on my team owns. It's what everybody I know that I know across the country that's been successful owns. Therefore, I'm going to sell them the combo. But if they want to know more about the other products and they're not, and they're, they're struggling coming up with $23,000, then we're going to work on funding. It's only when there's no way, for example, I'm closed. I, the signatures are done. The order's in. This is the third order in three weeks that I've placed. And she refinanced her house. She got her money last week. And I'm meeting up with her today or tomorrow to fund her education. With her refi, given the expenses that she had, I've gone over every other possibility of her funding. Her credit, her credit cards, her friends, her family, everything. And the one way we figured out how to do the education was the refi, but there's not $23,000 in the refi for it. Okay. There is only 11. 
So we're doing the profits, the essentials, and the advanced. And I know that she and we'll find it again. She'll she'll move up quickly. But I'm going to start her at the advanced. It's only when I've exhausted every possibility that makes financial sense. Like just because they have good credit and they could go get $23,000 in credit cards and then have $600 a month in payments does not make for a good point unless they can afford $600 a month in payments, right? We've got to be able to make the payment. We don't want to put anybody in a financial situation. So if somebody financially can't afford $23,000, then I will move down to to $11,000, right? I won't move down to six or two or eight. I will move to 11, right? And then I will move to eight and then I will move to six and then I will move to four and then or five and then I'll move to two and then I'll move to 400, right? Or 1600, right? Just depending. 1600 obviously would be 20% down on an advance. You guys follow me? I mean, I'm going down, down to where because it's the only thing that I know that works. Nothing else works. And I don't know of anybody that has ever bought something that involves Renata's education, utilized it, and then cr- created a profit. And then from that profit, went out and paid for more education with Renata's. I don't know anybody, not on my team, right? I don't even know that I know anybody who has physically become an ICM, made a sale, and bought the education with the ICM money. There might be somebody out there. I don't know anybody, right? So when people come up with these ideas and they will, I don't know. I don't know anybody who's physically made a a deal happen prior to getting started with Renatus and use the money from the deal to buy the education. Never. I don't know it. And you're going to get it all the time. And you're going to say, wow, that is a good idea. I completely understand why you would think that works. But let me tell you, I hope that it works but I've never experienced it. And in fact, if you're not, if you're not me and you're new or you're, you're just starting doing the Renata said selling and you're marketing and, you're, and you haven't done this very long or you've been doing it for two years and you've only talked to five people, whatever the case is, you can pretty much claim that I know a guy who's been doing this for four years and enrolled over 60 students and he's never ever had anybody flip a house and buy the education. It could happen, it's not impossible but it's obviously not very likely, right? I don't know anybody that has gone out of high school, that has gotten a job, saved up money from their job, and then prepaid for their college. I know people that have gotten a job, had kids and gone back to college on what? On a loan or a grant or some sort of scholarship, right? I know people that have worked their way through school. My wife paid for her own college, but she worked for school. She would take off of school sometimes so she could work to pay the bills to get back into school, right? But she didn't pay for it in advance. She would enroll in the classes and then pay for the school, right? So it was on a payment plan. (laughs) They worked for the money to pay for the college that they've just paid for. Does that make sense? You pay off your student loans. So people borrowed money to go to school. It's the same thing. It's the only way I know it, right? You look at all professionals that got out of school and then they went and started a job and they're paying back their student loans over 40 years. It's the government understands that. That's why they lend the money. So anyway, that was just a little thought I want to share with you guys. And I don't see any questions right now on the combo, like why the majority and everybody on my team either, uh, I don't know that I have anybody on my team right now that's only that's only advanced. I have a few essentials that I have not upgraded. Um, I'll tell you where those essentials people are. I don't know. I don't know where they are. Um, I don't even know what they're doing. I have to think about it. Um, Can you tell us a little bit about your system that you have on your board with your with your team there? Like, how do you use your board and, and... So, yeah, I don't know how to use the smart system yet that Eric and, and, and Nancy just slaved over. I think for most of you, um, 
it's going to provide an amazing opportunity. I think anytime you can take the time to research something that someone is creating for to benefit the students and the marketers of Renatus, you guys should use it. You should look at it. You should take the time and learn it. And I haven't. Um, my brain, um, I don't know whatever excuse I can come up with. I got probably m multiple. So this is my smart system. Bill, I have a question. Yep. Um, so based off of what you just said, I have someone that literally just texted me this morning. He got his essentials and he's like, I just made an offer on a multifamily. I haven't responded yet, but what conversation would you have um, with him? Because I know he's trying to do real estate um, with his essentials. So let me ask you this. Um, are you going to, are you going to respond or are you going to ask questions? Ask questions. I'm just figuring out the right questions to ask him. <laughs> like, so the first thing I'd be like, wow, that's awesome. Right. That's going to be like my first line or something to that effect. How did you do that? And then I won't, I won't send that text. Like, are, how are you going to pay for it? Are you going to assign it? What are you going to do with it? Are you going to hold it? Are you going to try to flip it? Are you going to try to fix it and sell it? Do you have the money raised for it? Like I might ask all those questions. In fact, I'd structure them where you talk about about five different classes that would help them to get this deal done. And I'd be like, I would just be like flat out. And that's amazing. You know what I mean? Like, like how the hell, how are you possibly going to do that without being like, how are you possibly going to do that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like that's that's what I that's what I would ask. I'm like I would I'd be like that's cool, man. How are you going to do that? Like what do you what are you what are your plans with it? Are you going to sell it, buy it? How are you financing? How much was it? You know what is the cap rate? You know what are the gross rents? Are you able to conquer and divide, divide and conquer this property? And he's going to be like, what the hell are you talking about? Are you going to be a you know are you able to improve the NOI? You know whatever you're going to ask him if you've studied the multifamily at all. And I would ask these questions. And, uh, awesome. and, uh, are. and then I, and then, um, let's just say he responds, you know, Oh yeah, I'm, I'm going to talk to my brother or my broker. Or, you know, somebody's going to give me the money. I'm going to try to assign the contract. You know, I don't really know yet. I just want to get it under contract and, and then I'm going to do my due diligence. Um, you know, do you have anybody that has money for a $1.5 million offer? I can't afford a um, hundred thousand on. Um, I'm just kidding. Don't look out. He's going to tell you that. Oh shit. Well, I'll put it in the background. Yeah. It's still 10 minutes away. Okay. I forgot the power's going out at eight o'clock. And uh, so I got to get on my laptop. Um, and so uh, I would definitely ask those questions and see what the response is. And most likely the response is going to be, um, you know, whatever the response is, I'd be prepared for it. But um, ultimately I'm going to ask, do you feel like you would have a better chance at this? You know, in fact, you could tell a story and, and I don't know. I don't know anybody. I don't know anybody. I know a lot of guys in, in Arizona that are doing multifamily. And I remember one of them, Chris Ontiveros and a couple other guys, brand, uh, these guys were in a mastermind of mine like five years ago and they could barely do a wholesale deal or fix and flip. And they got into it and then they moved into multifamily and they got a multifamily mentor and stuff like that. And now they've done multiple units. Uh, and it took years to get to that. I don't know anybody that has just made an offer on a multifamily unit and, and, and bought it. I'm sure that there are people with money and credit and some sort of job and maybe a mentor and everything lined up. And the first real estate they did was a multifamily, but I would, I would, I would be like, wow, I, I've never seen anybody just come out of the gate and make an offer and, and get a, get a multifamily deal done. I'm working with a guy right now. He's been trying to do a multifamily for a year and a half. You want to know what happened? He quit and he went and bought another program on a system. Right. He didn't buy Renatus but he went and bought another program on assisted living. Like it's insane. It it's, it's a whole different level. And so anyway, that's my thoughts first, right off the bat is like, wow, you know, what, you know, what are you going to do with it? How are you going to do it? I'm really interested in, you know, like almost to the point where you'd 
edify them to a point where you know you you almost want them to start to tell you uh, and and share with you all the holes in their plan. And then he just you, responded. Yep. Yeah. He said, I'm funding it from my retirement account. It did need some work. So I'll most likely get construction loan down the line since it's already fully rented. 12% cap rate, but I'll be able to increase the rent once I finish the work it's needed. It needs. Cool. How much was it? You don't have to ask that yet, but that would be a thought. How much was it? Do you plan to manage it? That's awesome. Do you want to, are you interested in learning how to, how to manage property managers? Are you interested in learning, um, you know, you're, before you respond, you could start to think like, what would be, you guys, this is, a, this is, this is crucial. I think. So like, if you think about it, if you have money in your retirement, right. And, and you're able to go buy a building, you could either stick your money in the retirement account that it's in, and it can make its Two to two to eighteen percent in the stock market over the course of a certain time, right? That's an IRA and a four hundred one k. It doesn't not work. It just doesn't work that well for a lot of people, and there's a lot of fees involved, and there's a lot of things left to chance. If the market is crashing at the time you want to retire, right? And you're and you're if you were anybody over the age of fifty nine in two thousand eight, then you lost a significant amount of your retirement. Whether so, then you had to ride it back out for another ten years to get it back, right? Twelve years. So hopefully, those people live long enough. When they were sick, fifty nine, you know, if they were seventy and the market crashed in two thousand eight, they probably didn't make it out of the recession, right? They probably lost a half or a third or seventy percent of their stocks, and they were gone. So if you're not retiring today and you're 35 and you've got a retirement account and you've got some financial planner who expects you to have a million dollars by the time you're 59, so be it, right? Same thing with an apartment complex. If you buy an apartment complex or a house with your retirement, so be it, it's there, right? But what's the point in, what are we trying to accomplish here, you guys? We're trying to accomplish a couple of things, some sort of net worth or legacy that we can leave to our children, right? So we don't want to spend all of our retirement and then run out of it. We also don't want to spend it all and not give it all to anybody, right? We also probably want to make a little bit more money. We also want to get out of the rat race, which means we want to have 10 or $20,000 a month, whatever your goal is. If you're in Rodas, it's probably 10 or $20,000 a month coming from uh, passive income. No matter what the market does, no matter what the world does, no matter where I am in life, I got 10 grand coming in and I am recession proof and I can go exceed my bills with my passive income, which enables me to then um, live in retirement to a certain degree. The lower I get my debt, the higher that 10 grand will go, but right, the farther that 10,000 will go. And then <clears throat> ultimately we wanna even have more, right? When we have more, we can give back. Now, I don't know if this is everybody's plan, but to some degree, it's everybody's plan. So if you only have this amount of retirement account and you could buy this apartment building, then you are stuck with these rents. And if the rent increase is 4% per year, right? You can do the math. If he can improve the NOI, right? And then what happens? Why does the government allow us to depreciate our real estate? because it freaking depreciates. It goes to crap, right? Apartment buildings wear out. I'm dealing with a house in Pittsburgh that I own that is a POS and a handyman. It's just a crap. It's old. It's older than anything tile stucco in Arizona. So it needs to be fixed. So it costs money, right? So if you have this one asset and it, you don't fix it over time and you don't put in reserves and you don't have reserves for major systems. And I don't know how many units this is, right? But this is a conversation. This is a thought process. And you don't have to have this whole conversation on text, but you can ask a question like, what's your freaking plan? Don't say the word freaking. And then, um, and then like, if you think about it, right? What is the, what am I getting at? If you have all your eggs in one basket, that's it, you're done. Go work for another 20 years to build up your retirement to buy your second apartment building. What do we learn how to do? 
I own multiple properties that I pay no money out of pocket, that I have no credit involved in, that I, have, that I own because someone gave it to me or I bought it with private money and hard money and then I refinanced out of the money and then I own it with nothing in, right? And I'm able to multiply and accelerate my wealth, my net worth and my passive income through creative acquisition strategies and borrowing other people's money and using other people's money and using my knowledge to make the majority of the money, right? So if, 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 if one only knows that they know how to analyze that little apartment building and they can improve the, the, the properties, you know, so they can get a little bit more of rent, then that's it. There's no divide and conquer. There's no restructuring the purpose. So getting a variance or rezoning the property to have like a boutique hotel and some apartments and some parking structures or something like that, or maybe some mixed use with some commercial. If that's not possible, they can never improve the property, right? And if they don't plan, the property is going to deteriorate over time and it's going to be a POS in 10 years and they're going to have to put a million dollars or sell it like every other grandma and grandmother that is selling their apartment building that they didn't take care of for the last 50 years, right? So it's dilapidated and the rents are low because they didn't take care of it. It's the same scenario, right? Investors, multi-millionaire investors, right? The people we aspire to be, the Bill Gates, and not Bill Gates, I'm sorry, the Donald Trumps, the people that are, you know, developers, they're constantly tearing down their own buildings and then they're putting up new buildings. They're buying new properties and selling off the old ones. They're improving all along. They're learning. They, you think they have just a billion dollars sitting around and if they do, they're going to put it in their own billion dollar skyscraper? Not at all, right? They're going to leverage. They're going to leverage relationships. They're going to leverage strategies. They're going to leverage commercial loans. They're, they're going to figure out how to manipulate cap rates. All of these things are not taught and are not known by the average person or anybody for that matter that has a retirement account that they built building, having a job, and then they go buy a one apartment. So congratulations. He's way ahead of me for that matter. And the fact that when he, when I would started out 10 years ago and I didn't go to buy apartment building, I didn't have the money. So it's awesome what he's doing. And that may be enough for him to live on forever, but is it? And I'd want to know that. You know, what is your plan? Do you, what if you, what if you wanted to duplicate this tomorrow? What if this deal, I got 755. I got to make sure there's no other questions. What if this deal, and I'm going to answer Keely's question. What if this deal works out and the guy across the street says, Hey man, you should buy my apartment building. It sucks. And he goes, huh? I don't have no money. I just bought this one over here. I'll go ask my buddy if he wants it. Right? Doesn't know how to assign it. Who knows? He doesn't know. You know what I'm saying? You guys get my point. All right. Those are some of the things I would think about when I'm going to structure those questions as to what is his plan. Because Renatus is long term. It is not a one time trick pony. What is, is that even a thing? One time trick, a one trick, I don't know, a one deal, a one and done. That's not what we're about. But hopefully, he, I mean, obviously he's not. That's not what I'm saying. We don't want to rip, tell him, tear him down. I mean, he's done something good. <clears throat> so you guys, the board is this. If you have a team, great. You can use the board more. You guys, my system is simple. Um, I constantly have on my board in front of me the people that I'm working with, right? Uh, that are hot and ready to go now. I want to work with people that are now, right? But as they, as they cool off, right? Then I move them on the board. Um, I constantly try to keep up with my team. I have a team of about 20 or so active ICMs that, you know, it's been a little bit slower, of course, with COVID for, for many of them, but we get together on, on a phone call every week. We get together, uh, you know, uh, out, trying to get together in person. Um, and I'm constantly texting my entire team individually or as a group text that I have, I have a group Facebook page and stuff like that. When my team has somebody new, I put it up under their, their name and I focus on that. I don't keep track of all my team's hundreds of leads. It's not physically, I, I don't even have the time and it, it doesn't make sense. That's their job, right? Um, but I always have to, you will find this forever, I think, is that this business to sustain until maybe you are, you know, Scott and Nancy Rowe and a few others, you, you, you do have to lead by example. There will be, you know, three, four, five, six, seven, eight years Michael's case, he's still killing it, leading, leading by example, killing the, the direct sale, um, you know, 10 years in where you're still going to be making direct sales. 
and you're going to make more direct sales than you will passive sales uh, with your team. And so I constantly focus on doing my, doing my own team. So my, my main columns on my board are my people, my sales, where I'm at. I've got my essentials people. I've got my team that needs to pass up. I've got my, far, my five stars way over here because although I'll help them anytime they want and Raphael and, and, and Keo Jones and Zach Jones sometimes, um, Jim and Carrie LePage, they'll call me. Uh, hey, I got this guy, right? But they're out doing their own one-on-ones and follow-ups and things like that. But I've got my Lee Morrises and I've got my, my, um, you know, my team that's, that's working on becoming Jen and these guys are working on becoming five-star and they're in the middle of it. You know, they're three-star qualified already. They've got, you know, $30,000, $40,000 worth of CV already obtained and they're ready to get five-star. So I'm working on their newest leads. And then I have old leads that I constantly put back up on the board. And, you know, it's somebody that I want to work with. I went through my entire, uh, you know, not my entire yet. I'm, I'm through a couple hundred of new old leads from, from Helios. And inside of there, my assistant and I are making text messages and stuff to them. 7.58, I got two minutes. And, um, and then we got the real estate call, the dream call. So let's get on that. I'm going to go pull up my laptop because I think my power is going to go out for a few hours. Um, I didn't pay my bill. No, that's not true. <laughs> Back in the day, I used to. You should see my next, my Facebook post I'm posting. It's going to be awesome. Uh, so uh, then I didn't pay bills sometimes. So um, so this, uh, she's going through and there's a lot of people I don't remember. And, and there's a few people she's connected with that I've been able to call and follow back up with. And they're like, you know, I don't really remember Bill, but I am definitely interested in real estate. I'd like to talk to him. And I look at the name. I'm like, yeah, I don't remember this person at all. I don't even know if this person is my lead, but it's in my back office. So I'm going to call it, <laughs> right? But there are people in my phone, you guys. There are people on my lists. I have multiple lists. Look at this. So I have multiple lists that I walk around with. And sometimes I don't get to them for weeks. And then I'll take these lists and I will rewrite them onto a new list. Um, and, and then what that does is it makes me remember more. Because then I can be driving down the road and I don't have to look at my list because I wrote it down four times. But these are people I give a crap about. These are people I'd want to work with. These are people I'd love to see on my team. These are people I think can fund the education and I actually wanted it and I haven't talked to them in a while. And so those people go on my board as a direct sale, right? My direct sales is my business. Through COVID, if I would have relied on other people, I'd be, F I'd be screwed. So through COVID, I've had to rely on myself, not my team, not other people, not my, my, not my, um, my contractors. I've had to rely on me. All right. Um, cool. FYI, smart training at the top of the hour, Zoom, credit nerds. There you go. Smart training. Anything, if you don't have your own system, you don't like your own system, get on their smart training system. Even if you have your own system, I would, you know, you take a look at this seriously. Um, you know, I believe that, you know, Nancy Rose has been doing this for almost two decades. And that girl knows every opportunity about, um, you know, how to follow up with people and, and like tracking people and all that stuff, right? She was Scott's appointment setter from day one, 2005 or six, whatever it was. And so, um, you know, she, she's made these smart systems and helped with Helios's, is that even a word? Help with Helios back office marketing systems and campaigns based on how people respond, react and, 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 and stuff like that. Like, like tomorrow was just talking about. So then she has a response to the response and then, and that's what the automation is about. And so this is probably designed very well. They put a lot of time and effort into it and I would give it a shot and see if you don't have a system already or you don't like your system or if your bank account's not reflecting a good system, then check out the smart system. With that, check out the dream, get your, you know, uh, I go to the dream call as a marketing tool to t sell your prospects on and your friends and family and close people you care about on the potential of them being in the masterminds and the dream calls with you and your team talking about real estate. That is the purpose of the dream call. Besides, you'll learn a little bit of stuff. So anyway, all right. I got 802. Keely, anything else? I'm going to put this in 760-533-3141. 760-533-3141. That is my number. Kim, you're welcome. Everybody, it is so awesome to see you here. Thank you so much for listening to me and spending time with me. I see multiple of my people on my team that are on this call. So if you folks, please reach out to me. Uh, let's, re let's get back together. Dan, everybody.